Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. I am your host, Anon Jr., and uh, it is time for the Season 1 Wrap-Up. Uh, feels a little odd not having the game loaded and ready to go. Uh, just wanted to go through a few different few things, so today's probably going to be a little bit shorter. Um, yeah, I probably should have some background audio going, though. Oh, well. Actually, I, I can I can fix that pretty quick. So, while I am loading up my usual live stream fare to kind of chill in the background while we chat, um, what was it, 20, 24-ish weeks ago? No, a little bit more than that because we missed a couple of weeks here and there. But we did 24 episodes of, or sorry, 25 episodes of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, a game that originally came out in 2003. And uh, it, it was a really fun game. It was... <laughs> I, I never got a chance to play it when it was initially released. That was about the time that I was playing uh, Delta Force Black Hawk Down. Uh, I would picked up a, a cheap copy of Soldier of Fortune 2 because the... It, the game was a year old at that point. Uh, still playing Unreal Tournament 2003 with uh, some friends. And so I, I had enough games going on that I never really added that in. Uh, I kind of wish I had had a chance to play this game before. Uh, before I had played the Knights of the Old Republic MMO. That was set in the same time period. Because playing the MMO ruined a couple of the plot twists and surprises in the game. Um, yeah, it, it's one of those things that, that... Well, that's the way it goes sometimes, right? So, so a couple of things that should have been a big surprise ended up not being a big surprise because... Well, the, the, the MMO either assumed you'd already played the game, or if you hadn't played it by now, you probably weren't going to. So here's all the information you need to get filled in uh, when we go. And that, that's, that's fine. That's all right. It was still a fun storyline. It was still a fun game. The game engine, it, this was, Knights of the Old Republic was actually the first game that used the, or was it the Odyssey engine, that, uh, that Bioware had put together. Matter of fact, they had customized the Aurora engine, the, the previous one that they had used for Neverwinter Nights. They, they took the Aurora engine and used it to build the Odyssey engine specifically for Knights of the Old Republic. They also used it in Knights of the Old Republic 2. Um, the, the game is one of those things that has a warm place in every Star Wars fan's heart. Uh, it's why when there were some talks about starting up another Star Wars trilogy, Disney was actually looking at Knights of the Old Republic to either do a movie series or a TV series. Uh, it was a little hand wavy on whether or not it was just going to be something that kind of occurred in the same timeline or if it was something that they were going to do like word for word out of the game, that kind of deal. Um... Uh, I'd always kind of hoped that they were going to do, they were going to do the game itself, like like they were actually going to put the story on the big screen, but maybe get like Kevin Feige to run the whole thing because he seems to do a pretty good job of sticking to uh, source material and, and handling that sort of thing. But that that that's another rant for another day. Uh, right now, right now, Disney's going to have to earn my trust on some more movies before I start giving them too much more. Uh, yeah, all right, let me cut that off before I go too much further. So the gameplay, uh, yeah, the story was great. We, we had a nice story progression. Uh, it, you didn't feel kind of shoehorned into too many different places. I mean, uh, there's a little bit of the railroading that happens because it's a game, and it's not, this was long before you had the big open environment games of like um, uh, Skyrim and that sort of thing. Those will come later. So you don't, you're not exactly free to just roam wherever you may and do whatever you may. 
uh, there, there's still a little bit of a little bit of narrowing of, of what what happens and where it happens. So, uh, but for the game and for the time period, it was awesome. The controls were a little clunky, at least on the PC. Uh, I would imagine if you were playing it on the Xbox, it might have been a little bit better in some respects. Uh, but to be honest, the last console I ever owned and played was the Super Nintendo. So <laughs> I'm probably not the I'm probably not the best person to ask. Um, and we'll we'll touch on that part a little bit later as we go, because. Uh, one of the things that I do want to get to next is, is some of the some of the lessons learned. Uh, one of them is a very interesting bit of psychology. So we did the live stream on Thursdays when it, in the early days went three hours and then kind of cut it back to two and then just try to keep it around two to two and a half depending on where we were in the game's storyline. And there were there were some people who started in early and were kind of regular, and then they dropped off as time went on. Um, a couple people that even commented that they really liked it, but a three-hour episode was just too long. Um, and, and it's not just on on mine that I've seen this th this kind of attitude before too. I, I look at some of the other YouTubers that I watch. And you look in their comments when they post a, a live stream replay on their YouTube channel and people go, you know, that's great and all, but I, I don't exactly have time to sit and watch four hours of gameplay. Of course, those are the same people who will sit there and also say, I just binge watched your last eight episodes. Your last eight 30 minute episodes. Hang on. Let's math this out. Oh, that's four hours of gameplay. <laughs> so it's one of those things that, that, that there's something weird in the psychology of time management or, or time or time management that you, you look at a four hour a th or three hour replay and you go, oh, man, that's a big, long video. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to set, set a chunk of time down to, to watch through that, even though even though YouTube is really good about allowing you to stop watching a video and picking back up where you left off. So for season two, what I want to do is I want to, I'm, I'm still going to do a two-ish hour live stream, maybe, maybe even scale that back just a smidge, because to do what I want to do, I'm going to need a little more time after the stream to edit. And I still, need, I, I still need time to get a little bit of sleep because I got to be back up at four in the morning to uh, to go to work. And uh, <laughs> so, what I'm thinking of doing is trying to set up the next season so that we we do. <laughs> no one needs sleep. <laughs> Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Uh, so, what I'm thinking of doing is. is I'm going to try to do the live stream such that it's in 20, 20 ish minute segments as best as the, as the game story allows. I'm not going to just like, you know, Oh, it's 20 minutes. We're going to pause right here. Um, you know, try to get a good feel for it, but I'll have a little stopwatch going. So that way I can keep an eye on when we hit about 20, 25 minutes. And as soon as we hit a good pausing point within that time range, I'll do the closeout intro the next episode and, and just keep the whole thing running live so pretty much i'm going to record uh five or six episodes that are going to be 20 25 minutes long and i'm going to record them live back to back to back so if you're watching the live stream you're going to see all the videos that are going to trickle out over the following week a and that's going to be the release too so the first 20 minute segment is going to go out the next morning. The next 20 segment will go out the day after that, the next the day after that. And in that way, I'll kind of trickle it out. And that way, it's not a lot of content hitting the feed all at once. And 
If you want to binge it, you can. If you if you really want to get the full experience, you can watch it live. Um, you know, Twitch and Mixer. I'll I'll keep the live stream replays up on there. Uh, I'll probably still upload the full live stream replay to YouTube, so that way I've got a backup somewhere. But I probably won't post it as a public link. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to figure out how to do is what sort of Patreon rewards I want to do. Because I would like to, to set up a Patreon page. I'd like to get the Streamlabs donation page working a little bit better than it seems to be. And maybe, you know, get a couple little things up there like that. So that way, um, if you like what's going on and you want to help support... You, you can go to those pages and do those sorts of things, and that way patrons can get access to the full the full replay or something like that. Uh, my, my puzzlement is that I'm trying to figure out how to set it up as an Anon Junior patron, where I've got different people coming for different reasons. Like, some people are going to be coming for Games Revisited. Some people are going to be coming for Minecraft, as we do the Coffee Craft stuff. And I want to make sure that the rewards are unique enough to, to warrant, you know, to actually be considered a fair exchange. Uh, even though, again, everything I'm going to do, I'm going to publish uh, live, I'm going to publish for free at least, because I, I want this to be a value-for-value value transaction. You know, if you get value out of what you're watching, then give a little bit of value back, consummate to, to, what, you, to what you feel it deserves. And so I'm trying to figure out how to get that going, too. And one of the ideas I was playing around with is having the full live stream replay be available in perpetuity for patrons. Um, I, I don't know if that's going to end up being the way it and actually goes or not. Uh, because I'm what I what I'm definitely going to do is I'm definitely going to make sure that season two will start in January. Now it's not going to be you know radio silence between now and January. What's going to happen is next Thursday, I'm going to do a bunch of mini-sodes because I, I need to get a couple of things accomplished, and this will help me do that between now and January. Um, as I mentioned a few times in weeks past, the game that I'm going to play for Season 2 is Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger, if you don't know, was originally published for the Super Nintendo and a variety of the other game systems that were around about the same time. And it was an absolutely fun JRPG. It, it was... Uh, I, I, played, I played through it more times than I care to mention. And... I've got a couple of different options to how I'm going to end up making this happen on stream. One of the things that I can do is I, I've got the I've still got the cartridge. I've still got the game system. If I can find drivers for the game capture card that I have floating around, which might be uh, that, that might be a little bit tough, then I could just you know pipe in the console to to the computer, capture it that way, and then stream as I go straight off the console, um, which, which neatly handle some of the legal issues around 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 that sort of thing because my other option would be to use a game ROM in an in, in a Super Nintendo emulator. Now that's where we start getting into some questionably legal stuff because uh, companies, Nintendo in particular, really don't look too kindly on that sort of thing. Even though the at least what's gone to trial, what we have as far as case law and settlements and the generally accepted stuff is that as long as you have the cartridge, you can also have the ROM. Because the ROM is simply a backup of what you already own. And there are copyright exemptions for making a personal backup to a different medium of content you already own. It's why you can rip your the CD that you own to MP3. Now, you can't share those MP3s. You're not allowed to distribute them. But you can have a personal backup copy. And so it's that same concept just applied to the game ROMs. So as long as you have the cartridge, the ROM is just a backup in a different medium of the content you already own. So 
I, I could go ahead and use the use the ROM. I, I've seen the tutorials on how to how to back up the ROMs to your computer. It's not not too hard to follow through. Um, and then I could play so I could play the ROMs in an emulator and do it that way. What I will most likely do though is right now Steam has a re-release of Chrono Trigger available. It was on sale over the holiday weekend, so I was able to pick it up for about 8 bucks. It might still be on sale, and if it's not, it'll probably go on sale between now and Christmas. So if you don't have a copy and you'd like to play along, uh, that is an option as well. And I might just play the Steam version too, because that solves a lot of the... I don't have to worry about trying to find... Uh, video drivers for that ancient game capture card I have because all the new stuff I can get it's only going to pull in HDMI and the Super Nintendo is pre HDMI <laughs> it's pre HD anything uh, yeah it, you need a little red <laughs> red yellow blue or red red yellow and white um, RCA cables <laughs> and yeah sorry uh, I'm justifying the, uh, the, the, the gray that's, that I've got going there. Um, sad. Just like when Throt was talking about how long ago Halo came out. Uh, mm, never mind. All right. I might circle back around to that later. Um, so anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. So rather than messing with drivers and messing with ROMs, I, I, I'll probably just end up playing the Steam re-release, which has the advantage of being remastered graphics, remastered audio, so it'll be a little bit crisper, a little bit clearer, and as a Steam app, it, it, is, it is easy for XSplit to pick up the video and capture the game so I can broadcast. The only, the only thing that has me a little concerned is that... The uh, the version that's on Steam, the re-release, they changed some of the dialogue. There, there are subtle changes here and there. Like just, I, I played the first 10, 15 minutes just to kind of see how well the controller is going to work with all with all that, and I immediately noticed some differences in the dialogue that's available to you and and it's got me wondering what else has changed like the steam page mentioned some bonus content that was added uh as a part of the port and re-release and so that's got me kind of concerned too because the the whole idea of games revisit is supposed to be a nostalgic look at classic games or you know uh games that i enjoyed long ago or games that i wanted to play but never got around to at the time and want to revisit um and so I, I don't know if I'm comfortable with playing a changed version of the game. So that, that is one of the things that, that I do. Uh, I'm kind of waffling on a little bit. Uh, ultimately, I, I'm, I will probably just go with the Steam version just because it, it, I know it will be a lot more reliable and save, saves a whole bunch of issues, but... Uh, I might change my mind between now and then too. <clears throat> so, with, with all that said and done, what I want to do for the next couple weeks is run the stream like I think it's going to work well for season two, where I I stream for a couple hours and it's going to be set up in 20 to 25 minute segments with pause points and that sort of thing. So I'll do my intro, play the 20-25 minutes, do the outro, and do the intro, and so on, and kind of weave in the different episodes back to back, so that way when the stream is done, all I gotta do is hit the cut points, export the segments, and then I've got my episodes. It sounds really good on paper. I've had lots of things that sounded really good on paper, and <clears throat> so I want to make sure that uh, it, it works out in practice like it does on paper that that is my plan at least so what i'll probably do is uh definitely next week and the week after i'm gonna pull up a calendar so i can make sure i get this right so yeah december 12th and the 19th i am definitely gonna stream 
And what I'll probably do is instead of doing one game for the whole two hours, I'll bounce around between five or six different games and uh, I'll kind of stick to a theme like maybe on the 12th I'll do five or six classic Nintendo games that I enjoyed that I still have floating around here somewhere um, and make that work. That'll give me a chance to test game capture. That'll give me a chance to test the intro outro cut export process and try to get an idea for the workflow and see if it works as well as I think it will. Um, and then again, repeat it again on the 19th, maybe doing a super Nintendo theme and do some other super Nintendo games and just do a uh, five or six different ones, uh, you know, a little mini soda of each and just call it season intermission <laughs> and do it that way. Uh, the 26th, since that is the day after Christmas, I do don't know if I'm going to stream that day or not. It depends a lot on the holiday plans and whether or not I'm traveling. So if I'm not traveling, if I'm home, then I will almost certainly stream. If I am traveling, I may try to do what I was going to do Thanksgiving weekend, but didn't get a chance to finish setting up. And that is pre-record something and try out restreams uh, pre-recording option. So in other words, I, I can pre-record a video, upload it to Restream.io, who I'm using to simulcast out to Twitch and Mixer. And then you set up the schedule for when you want that episode to air, and then Restream will go live on Twitch and Mixer and send out the pre-recorded video as if it was a live stream. Um... So that may be what I do the 26th if I'm not home and able to go live, uh, which is going to change what I do as far as gameplay, because right now I'm on the free plan for Restream.io, which means that my uh, pre-recorded episodes, the, the things that I can schedule to happen later, is limited to a 30-minute episode. So that would be one small game or one little video like this where I'm at 22 minutes now. Um, that kind of deal. And maybe maybe what I'll do is I'll just do an intro to Chrono Trigger and talk a little bit about the game and then call it, and then call it done. Uh, that's, that, that's one of the things that I'm going to have to figure out how I want to handle. And that's going to depend a lot on what the holiday plans are and whether or not I'm going to be traveling. So kind of keep an eye out for that. And then after that is the second. I'm not going anywhere for New Year's because I only have two days of paid time off left banked up. So that that's going to be used. If I can only use it around Christmas or New Year's, they're going to be used around Christmas. And so I will definitely be home on the second. And that is when I plan on starting season two with Chrono Trigger. And, so, and then we'll just go week by week, just like we did with Knights of the Old Republic. And hopefully, though, with the new format, so that way each episode will be about 20, 25 minutes. That's my goal right now, um, with, with an upper limit of 30. Uh, it seems like most of, the, most of the content out there doesn't go too far past 30. Um, but that's one of those. That, that's one of those things that I'm kind of holding off, like if I'm at... 22 minutes in and the big boss battle is happening uh, I'm not going to stop in the middle of the big boss battle I'm not that mean uh, I won't do that to you and leave you on a cliffhanger to be continued the big boss battle ha 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 no I'm not going to do that um, okay I probably won't do that to you <laughs> you, you feel like that's pointed I don't, I don't know why you would think that. <clears throat> so that is, uh, that, that, that is, that is where that sits right now. Um, minus 1000. Oh, hey, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll bring some GM bribes before Friday. Do you, can you be purchased in goldfish? I hear the fishes are so delicious. <laughs> uh, and the other 
the other thing that this might be able this gives me a chance to do is in order to make sure that uh, this new format goes smoothly I will definitely definitely have to script out my intro and outro a little bit tighter I, I know this one been one of those things that I, I've felt alternately really good and really bad about because sometimes it, it's been it's been really nice it's been really smooth it, it works well and then other times I I finish the stream and I go oh Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been saying that for months. And th this is th this is where I'm running into some of the troubles. Uh, the heart is willing, but the energy just isn't available. And I've got so many things that I want to do. Things that I want to do with Games Revisited. Things that I want to do with Coffee Craft. Things that I want to do in addition to those two projects. Uh, I've had a Bible study podcast that I've had on the books to, to work on for the last three years now. Uh, I've got the domain registered, i got the website built, and it's just been one of those things that, uh, unfortunately, because I, I started the project while I was in the deepest throes of burnout, uh, I, I never really worked on on the project for much more than a month or so at a time. And sometimes not even that long at a time. And then I go a few months without being able to work on it. And then I work on it for a couple of weeks. And then I go a few months without being able to work on it. And, and so it, uh, I'm getting a little bit of this too. Um, that's why once uh, I, I've had to make some changes in my schedule, I had to stop, uh, stop the guitar lessons and voice lessons that I was taking. Uh, so that way I get the next insurance package up and start getting a little bit better help which should help with uh with this as well because if i can get myself into a better place i can do more of this uh that is also in part why i'd like to get the patreon thing doing because if if i could if i get a little bit of money out of patron or um twitch subscriptions or that sort of thing it would enable me to back off the full-time job a little bit and be able to devote a little bit more time to doing this sort of thing as well. So th there's a big mix of all that sort of stuff going on on top of all this. And, yeah, a little bit more for that going on too. Um, so with all that said and done, that is the, uh, that, that is the general idea for... What happened, where things are now, and where they are headed in the future. Uh, keep tabs at anonjunior.com. That is my website. That is where I have links to everything that I'm doing, and I even occasionally write there. Um, it, it has been overdue for a redesign. Um, not necessarily graphically speaking, like the front end, but the, the process for updating is a royal pain, and that is part of the reason why I don't update as often as I want to. Uh, so hopefully I can work on that uh, in the next couple of weeks. I I'd intended to do it over the Thanksgiving vacation, but uh, it was a long weekend. It was really nice to kick back and not do too much. Um, except mess with console emulators and ROMs and things and try to get, try to get stuff hooked up for Season 2. Um, so... AnonJunior.com, that is the main site. You can also at me at AnonJunior on Twitter. And uh, down in the description below, if you're watching this live, is a link to the YouTube channel. There's a link to the YouTube channel up on the uh, uh, up on the website, AnonJunior.com. And uh, if you're not watching this live, then uh, you're probably already watching it on YouTube. You know where the channel is. So wherever you're watching... Uh, please do subscribe, do follow. Uh, that way, that way, I know that there are more people <laughs> that this is something people are interested in. I'm probably going to do it either way, but it helps. It helps in so many ways. So, uh, with that, I'll, I'll probably have a little bit more to talk about on these lines the next go round. And um, sorry. I really gotta rearrange my desk too, because I've got my stream deck down just off the corner, <laughs> and and not all the buttons fit on one screen. So it's one of those things that I gotta kind of look, look off to the side to make sure I've got the right uh, the right stuff up. Oh oh oh! Before I close it out, I almost forgot. I was originally going to use my uh, 
8-bit Dio uh, gamepad, the Bluetooth wireless one, except it's no longer supported and the Bluetooth functionality doesn't work anymore. So none of the buttons work. I tried it working a wireless and a, or wired and it worked okay wired. It's got a nice little USB port on the top so you can run a cable into it and do it wired. Problem is buttons are a little mushy. I had a lot of problems with uh, hitting buttons and not getting the expected response, which means that it is a fully uh, retro compatible controller because it's just like the old controllers that shipped with the console. Um, so instead, at least at the beginning, I'm going to be using this old Logitech F310 gamepad, which I have had for quite some time. Uh, it has the benefit of being Xbox compatible and supporting a lot of that good fun stuff. And it has been solid and reliable and wonderful. Uh, although I might pick up an Xbox gamepad uh, while they're on sale for the Christmas season. That's just a thought, though, because the the Logitech controller it it has been uh, faithful and steady and solid, and I I don't see that not working anytime soon, especially since it is compatible with the Xbox uh, controller protocols, and that goes a long way because Microsoft supports stuff for a long time. Um, okay, so now. Let me hit this page here where I go to the credits and I say thank you very much for joining in. Uh, keep tabs, new things coming, and hopefully the YouTube channel will have more than just games revisit and coffee craft before too long. Uh, but even just for that. And hopefully I'll get the donations thing going so that way you can be thanked up there. And uh, we, we can also do that sort of stuff too. And with all that said and done, have fun. Good night, and if I don't see you Tuesday at 6 p.m. for Coffee Craft, I will see you next Thursday at 6 p.m. for some games revisited. <laughs>